Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Grand Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, I've got some huge pickups and hidden gems for you. Some ones that I was like, wait, this card used to be like five bucks and oh my gosh, it got a reprint recently. A lot of things have been getting reprints recently and now it is so budget friendly. I mean, the first one I'm going to bring up especially, let's jump into it. So, I'm probably going to be going about things in a weird order, according to Moxfield, but let's just start with this one. Arborea. Um, this is nine cents now. I did not think this would be anywhere near nine cents. I just was looking through, like, cards less than this amount, and was like, wait, that's budget-friendly now? It's such a weird, amazing card. It's a world enchantment, because that's a thing. Basically, just way back in the day, right, they had, like, world enchantments, and then, uh, I guess auras, I can't remember, but they didn't call them auras. Anyways, world enchantment, basically just considered to be an enchantment, okay? Two green green. Creatures can't attack a player unless that player cast a spell or put a non-token permanent on the battlefield during their last turn. Okay, this is not for every deck out there. I will say that right now. That being said, this is a hidden gem in that, well, you might never have thought it was budget friendly, number one. Number two... If you are playing a deck that doesn't, you know, depend upon combat and can sit back and maybe play it instant speed, this is incredible. This is like no one's coming after me ever. <laughs> it can also change how players play their turns as well. Some other players might be like, uh, I'm in a situation where I'm going to get taken out. I would like to cast a spell, but I can't because if I do, I'm going to get taken out. So it can change what your opponents do as well. So if you have a deck that does not depend on combat to win, and you also are flexible when you can play spells, and also maybe just make tokens too, because you can make tokens that you turn yourself fine. So there's a lot of different requirements for it, but it is a spicy, crazy card and one to consider picking up right now. Again, just nine cents. Absolutely crazy. All right, next up. Karmic Justice, another great enchantment to consider right now. An enchantment for two and a white. Whenever a spell or ability an opponent controls destroys a non-creature permanent you control, you may destroy a target permanent that opponent controls. This is a giant do not touch my stuff card. <laughs> this is, hey, okay, I'm sitting back, I'm doing my own thing, all right? I've got my enchantments, I've got my artifacts, I've got my whatever's in play. And you, if you touch my stuff, I will destroy whatever I want that you control. Again, target permanent. So they can destroy something, and you can destroy whatever you want. Again, it can even be a creature. It's not like one for one. It doesn't have to be exactly what it is. That being said, this can be a great card to say, hey, leave me alone. If you don't leave me alone, you're going to be in trouble. So again, yet another, yeah, let's just not kind of card. Moving on. Fervent Charge, now just 16 cents and a champion for four mana in Mardu. Whenever a creature control attacks, it gets plus two, plus two until I've turned. This card got really, really, really good with like Ishin, essentially, with that, you know, combat, not combat doubling, you know, attack doubling triggers, essentially. That being said, even outside of Ishin, still, an enchantment that actually, an anthem that can actually pump creatures more than just one power, you usually got to pay quite a bit more than that, essentially, or there's like a big downside to it. Once you're getting above, you know, four mana, essentially. But at four mana, this is perfect. This is, okay, with all my creatures, I can get very aggressive. I can swing. They get an extra pump, you know, plus two, plus two. It doesn't help you on the other end of things, right? It doesn't help you, essentially, you know, on your opponent's turns when you're blocking. That's okay, though. One thing it actually helps you out with, too, that some decks like to take advantage of, like, you know, Ishin, extra combats. This, unlike other anthems, is going to stack. So, again, you swing. They get plus two, plus two. You get extra combat. You swing again. An extra plus two, plus two. It's building on itself. So, make sure you're keeping all that in mind. Just want to point this one out. Not that it's never seen playing Commander, because it definitely has. And be careful with what decks you put it in. Polluted Bonds. An enchantment for five mana in total. Whenever a land enters Balfoot under opponent's control, that player loses two life and you gain two life. This can put a target on your back. So, be careful. That being said, yeah, players are going to play lands, especially that Simic player over there. Well, basically anyone with green, right? Anyone with fetch lands. Again, lands entering, not just lands, you know, being played. So, yeah, if someone ramps, if someone plays an Evolving Wild, sacrifices it, and does, you know, they go get a basic put into play, they're losing even more life, you're gaining even more life. So, obviously, any kind of a deck that can take advantage of opponents losing life, you know, if you've got, like, doubling up effects like Wound Reflection, stuff like that, which is also very budget-friendly right now, make sure you check that one out as well. And also, of course, life gain tragedies consider this as well. 
yeah i mean players like to play lands be careful though again because this can put a target on your back be careful you might want to be set up with the other cards we're like ah i've got things in play you can't attack me i'm fine okay moving on prismatic omen this is such a good card lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types and him for one in a green so you get this down again in a I mean, I'm not going to say you'd want to utilize this in every kind of a deck, but hey, if you are up there, you know, four or five color, being able to perfectly fix your mana for just two mana on an enchantment, which in my opinion is one of the tougher permanents to deal with, if not the toughest kind of permanent to deal with typically, becomes like a wrath. Typically, wraths are like, destroy all creatures, and this is like, I'm fine. Regardless, this is a great card to say, okay, all my lands are a basic land type. I can tap for any color. I don't have to worry about tapping this or that or this or that, whatever it is. I can just tap five lands to cast this spell that costs five mana different colors. Cool. Being able to just perfectly fix your mana gives you a lot more flexibility. And also, I'm sure, like, there's some, like, hey, if you have this many islands in play or this many, those kind of benefits give you it as well. I guess domain type effects, too. Actually, I forgot that I put Ruin Reflection in here. It's great right now. Just 59 cents. So, again, enchantment for six mana. In black, at the beginning of each end step, each moment lose life to life. They lost this turn. Doubling up life loss can be absolutely huge. So make sure you're keeping that in mind. Again, with things like polluted bonds or other things as well. Let's move on to a another category, though. Because next up, let's talk about some artifacts that right now you should be checking out, picking up. Yeah, Basilisk Collar. This is a card that I never really thought would be budget-friendly, but it keeps getting reprinted. Finally budget-friendly so good equipment for one it costs two to equip so very low to the ground pretty cheap to equip as well equip creature is death touch and lifelink two very relevant keywords especially death touch my goodness this can change combats just on its own by throwing this on a creature it doesn't make the creature unblockable but it makes it much less likely your opponent is going to block that creature or it is going to again if you have like a lure type effect be a removal spell in that way where you can force blocks and also take out creatures too on top of that as a blocker your creatures also can be like oh yeah come at me i don't care if i'm a one one i don't care what i am i'm taking whatever i block out not if they're indestructible sure or whatever but most of the time death touch is going to take anything out it also works well with trample again if you have trample on a creature you get extra damage through it's a crazy good keyword lifelink obviously very relevant as well pad your life total that's very nice and on top of that of course if you have a life gain strategy life gain synergies you can take advantage of those as well a very good card also keep in mind with this one with like pingers yeah with that death touch absolutely lovely too next up be careful with this one i will say right away be careful with this one first of all this art is just horrifying uh but beautiful but horrifying uh let your artifact for a six mind slaver yeah this card is somehow budget friendly now 57 cents right now i can't believe i'm saying that because this card typically has been like four five six seven eight nine ten bucks whatever it has been over the years nowhere near less than a dollar pay for it tap sacrifice it you control target player during that player's next turn brutal another thing that's brutal about this card is that this does not exile so you can maybe get it back and do it again and maybe get it back and do it again and maybe get it back and do it again and then your opponent never gets to play again magic um yeah again be careful with this one this is one of those cards where it is definitely on like the saltiest cards out there you might want to ask your play group about this one first if they're okay with that some play groups are like no don't do that anyways it's a very good effect obviously you can just completely sabotage someone's entire turn again you take someone's turn and you're like hmm what can I do that is the worst for you? Let me look at your hand. Oh, some great removal spells. I'll remove my own thing. I'll remove my own thing. I'll send my creatures into combat against my other two opponents. Not that one that's controlling me right now. And then uh, get those creatures taken out. Maybe take an opponent out at the same time and just completely ruin what I'm doing. So there you go. And then do it again next turn because you can just get it back and do it again. Again, be careful with this one. You might lose some friends. Okay. Moving on, Massacre Worm. Okay, so this one, again, yeah, another thing where I was like, oh, that's somehow budget friendly now? Amazing. A 6 5 Phyrexian Worm for six mana in black. Enters the battlefield, creature's opponent's control, get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever a creature to opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. This is so punishing. This is like a giant version of, I mean, not Blood Artist really, but like kind of along those same lines. Punishing opponents whenever the creature dies is huge. Two life per creature is a lot. Also, this is a mini board wipe on a body. Again, hey, you, you got your token deck out there like, yeah, I'm feeling great. I've got 21-1 soldiers. And you're like, great. You lose 40 life. 
Yeah, you have this coming to play. It can just wipe a lot of things out. Keep in mind, this can be very good, especially in clone decks. My goodness. Can you get this into play? Maybe you can clone at the same time. Awesome. Get a second one in play. Again, that's minus four, minus four to all creatures, essentially. And by the way, uh, creatures your opponents control, I should say, it's one-sided. And by the way, whenever your creatures die, now it's minus four life instead of three. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely efficient. And of course, yeah, blink effects can work well with this too. Other, you know, wrath effects can work great too. Take your opponents out in absolutely no time with this. Speaking of that, Tide Spout Tyrant. This is one that when I started playing and started building, used to be budget friendly. I love this card. And then it was like, nah, not budget friendly anymore. And finally reprinted back to budget friendly. 5-5 five, five Flying Gin for 8 mana in blue. Whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. This is very simple, very effective. This is very brutal. This is very incredible. This is amazing. There's so many ways to describe this. It is game ending. This is just, hey, I'm just a 5-5 five, five flyer for 8. Not that big of a deal. But then you're like, oh, by the way, I just cast this spell. Oh, I guess I get to bounce something. Okay, yeah, your biggest threat back to your hand. Eventually, your opponents run out of things because, yeah, they keep playing things. You keep being like, like oh, I'm spending 8 mana to cast my big thing. And you're like, oh, I spent 2 mana to bounce it. And also draw some cards or whatever else I did with that card. Being able to just decimate your opponent's boards, wiping them out, and then also just at a certain point being like, hmm, okay, you ran out of things. There goes your lands. Sorry. My bad. My bad. I mean, at a certain point, they run out. Yeah, that being said, there's also some infinite combos that work with this thing. This thing is just a really good finisher for you. Yeah, an incredible card. Moving on to some instants. Imps Mischief. This one is a very mischievous card because it is very unexpected. It's an instant for one a black changing target to target spell with a single target. You lose life, you let spells mana value. Typically, you will see like change target type effects only in really red or maybe like a little bit in blue-ish. This one's like, no, I'm in black and I get this effect. Yeah, I lose some life, but hey, you're in black. You got, you know, losing life's not a big deal at all, right? All your, you know, draw cards are like, oh, sign of blood, I lose two, draw two. Cool, all right, losing life's fine. You got some life swap effects. You got a lot of life gaining effects, Garys and mono black. Yeah, this is the kind of card where it's like, okay, your opponent thinks they have you, and then you're like, swap that around. And keep in mind, this is a counter counter spell. What I mean by that is, or counter spell counter. What I mean by that is essentially, again, you just cast something awesome. You cast something amazing. And your opponent's like, huh, I'm a blue mage. Counter spell, ha ha. And you're like, um, imps miss Jif. I exchange, uh, I exchange, <laughs> I change the target of your counter spell to Imp's Mischief. Yes, you can do that. And so all of a sudden, they're like, oh, it doesn't counter your big spell anymore. It just counters the Imp's Mischief. No, but it doesn't like counter it anyways. So yes, this is, yeah, at a cost of losing life, but it's also a great gotcha card that can help you out in so many scenarios when your opponents are like, there's no way that black deck can do that. And you're like, yes, I can. Counter spell. Moving on, Ghost Way. Yep, finally budget friendly. I was asking for this one to be reprinted for years. This is amazing. Instant for two and a white, exile each creature control, return those cards to the battlefield, under control control, begin next end step. This is a great, well, board wipe protection spell, first of all, being like, oh, okay, that player casts a Wrath. Okay, my creatures go away and they come back later. Okay, have fun, everyone else's creatures going. Bye-bye. Uh, obviously, you can also just Wrath yourself and this, I mean, Wrath yourself, Wrath the board uh, yourself and then blink your creatures as well with this. But yes, in any kind of a blink deck where you're like, hey, I've got a bunch of great ETBs. This is an incredible one. Three mana, blink your board. Eerie Interlude's a bit more flexible, but this is still very, very, very good. A great card indeed. Prosperity. Prosperity. That's the Prosperity poster at the top of it. Commandeer. It's kind of funny with these like different art cards. They tend to be a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper than the other versions. Um, I like the designs of them, even though I apparently am like, it's Prosperity. No, that's actually another card in Magic. This is Commandeer. It's just like, that's part of like the art. Anyways, instant for five blue, blue, but you'll probably never pay that. You may exile two blues for your hand. <laughs> blues, blues, blue cards. If I could talk for your hand, run pay spells, mana cost. Gain control target, non-creature spell. You may choose targets for it. Um, hey, you know what's great? Out of nowhere, being tapped out, stealing something from your opponent. <laughs> again, gaining control of a non-creature spell and just saying, that is mine now. And again, keep mine. That's not just like instant sorceries. That also includes... Well, planeswalkers includes battles, I guess. But yes, artifacts, enchantments, and there are some massive ones you can just steal and be like, oh, okay, cool. Again, you thought I was tapped out. Yeah, I was, but I also have a massive hand because I'm in blue. I can get rid of some blue cards from my hand, play this for free, steal your amazing spell 
thank you it is now mine obviously you can still pay for it as well like a big mana deck could utilize this too but yeah if you've got a good draw engine going if you've got a good amount of cards in your hand you can exchange three cards for your opponent's like best spell that is cast and just take advantage of it so it's an amazing card next up though with sorceries another from the prosperity post or whatever that is <laughs> interesting that they do with like the uh the split cards as well crime and punishment i feel like when it comes to like these kinds of cards some see less play like when players see like certain text on cards they're like well i don't need that part they kind of ignore like the rest of it that, that sometimes happens on cards where like well like that one uh like nickel bolas like uh monument thing or whatever it is it's like well i'm not playing you know the to pay seven tap sacrifice it brings something else out or whatever it's like well the first part says like when a creature dies you draw and discard and that's very nice for a lot of decks yeah players just like stop reading and then just stop doing it this is a great one okay so even if you don't want either one side or you might want the other so just keep that in mind okay crime let's talk about this first crime is put our creature or enchantment card from opponent's graveyard on the battlefield under control Stealing a creature or stealing a champion would be a very powerful thing. If that's not for your deck, though, the other part might be. Sorcery with punishment for X, black and a green. Storage artifact creature and champion may value X. A flexible board wipe. How many decks out there don't want flexible board wipes? Raise your hands right now. Okay, I mean, there's a couple, but still. A very flexible board wipe is amazing. So the fact that you might not use the crime side, I mean, you might. You very well might, okay? You might use the crime side. It might come in really handy. Again, an opponent might have a massive creature in their graveyard, and you're like, I'll steal that. Or, I mean, goodness, I mean, like a dream scenario, right? Omniscience in the graveyard. I don't know how that happened, but thank you. I win. Um... But yes, at the very least, having a flexible board wipe like this one can be absolutely incredible, so definitely consider it. Sapling Symbiosis. Definitely another card that was nowhere near budget-friendly, now finally is. Sorcerer, four mana in green. You may cast as though it flash if you pay two extra to cast it. Basically, hey, instant speed for two extra for six in total. Create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token for each creature you control. Double up your army. Potentially at instant speed. What's not to love about that? If you have a go-wide strategy, paying four mana, or instant speed six mana, to double it up is absurd. So if you have a token strategy, if you've got a go-wide strategy, definitely consider this card. And if you care about saplings, I guess. But again, most of the time, it doesn't really matter. Again, if you have like a go-wide strategy, it's like, I've got a bunch of soldiers. I've got a bunch of uh, warriors. I don't know. Whatever they are, typically don't really care. Okay? Just make a bunch of saplings. Who cares? Just make a ton of them. Next up, Ill-Gotten Gains. A crazy good recursion spell. Sorcerer, four mana in black. Exile it. Each player discards their hand, then returns up to three cards to so graveyard to their hand. Here's the thing. Again, other colors out there. I mean, black actually has a good amount of card advantage. Okay, I should say that first of all. But let's say that you don't care with your deck. You don't care about having a massive hand. Maybe you have a discard deck. Maybe something like that. Maybe you don't care about having a massive hand. If your opponents probably do, they probably do, right? We talked about the blue player out there. It was like, I've got so many cards, I can lose three. Whatever. Uh, Yeah. It, this takes everyone down to the exact same amount of cards in their hand, first of all, right? Everyone goes down to three. Also, you get back the three best cards out of your graveyard. Now, your opponents do as well. That being said, if your deck is built around this, you're going to take advantage of it more than your opponents will. On top of that, hey, um, if you have things like maybe Bajuka Bog, which is in black, as well as the new MDFC, ETB, Exile Graveyard, whatever, if you get rid of your opponent's graveyards too, they're not getting anything back. <laughs> I mean... They, they do kind of whip this, but they're getting back a more limited thing than you are. You know what I mean, all right? Great recursion for you. Keep that in mind. Also, hey, Overmaster. Do you ever just need to make sure that something goes through? Here you go, Overmaster. I guess Commandeer can technically get around this, but most things can't. Sorcerer for a single red mana. The next instant or sorcery spell you cast can't be countered. This turn can't be countered. Draw a card. This one is a cantrip. Again, a low to the ground one mana cantrip. That's probably the amount that you're going to be paying for it, right? One mana, draw something, all right? And usually just an additional tiny effect. This is a pretty big effect, though. The next spell can't be countered, all right? So either this is just like a giant lightning rod for a counter spell, which you spent one mana on a spell that's going to get countered. Good for you. Your opponent wasted more mana than you did. They missed a bigger resource than you did. Or, I mean, this makes it so that the next spell is definitely going through. So if you have a giant finisher spell, cool. You get to cast that spell now. Love this card. Finally, let's talk about some great lands that you should be checking out right now. Flooded Grove. The Filter Lands. I think that, are these called the Filter Lands? Something along those lines. But yeah, this is a really good card. Taps for colors. So it doesn't come into play taps. You can tap it for mana if you need it right away. You also can probably tap for mana and any combination of colors you need. 
tap uh tap in <laughs> add in either simic color green or blue tap this and you can tap in any combination of two simic colors green 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 blue or blue blue so being able to filter your mana and perfectly get whatever mana you want out of it that is incredible on a lane that again doesn't come to play tap and can give you mana right away if you need it so yes definitely consider this and other filter lands i think i saw the boros ones now also budget friendly there's a couple other ones that are budget friendly now as well crystal quarry when it comes to filtering this does a really good job if you're in a five color strategy if you're not in a five color deck um you can't use this because this is uh you know it's a color identity is five color anyways tap for a colors pay five and tap to add wooberg lovely so this one again does come to play untapped you can utilize it for mana right away if you need to that being said this is great filtering you are technically i will say technically going down one mana because although it's like you know pay five add five that's even right but you are tapping this land so you're giving up on the actual mana from this land to do so so you're kind of going down one mana that being said giving yourself mana fixing out of a land like this can be incredible for the right deck out there and right now this one's just 42 cents an incredible budget card but as this episode is coming to a close if you're interested in any of these cards make sure you check out that card list link in the description below and consider picking up some of these sooner rather than later and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show make sure that you like share and subscribe also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes you can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com we also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 